Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today we're going to be taking a look at this Larceny Barrel Proof Batch B521. All right, so for those of you who have watched my channel before, you probably know that I am not the biggest fan of what Heaven Hill has been doing with this Larceny Barrel Proof lineup. Now, I don't want to start this review off on a negative note, but I do think it's important to provide a little bit of context about why this particular brand extension has really missed the mark for me. So let me explain. I think that for me, and probably for many of you out there as well, we have this idea in our minds of what a barrel proof weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill should taste like. And I actually think it's Heaven Hill's fault that we have this expectation in our minds. So let me give you a couple of examples here. The first one is the old Fitzgerald bottled and bond decanter series that Heaven Hill releases. Now this is sort of a limited release. I believe it comes out twice a year. And as a bottled and bond product, it's coming in at 100 proof. But the great thing about this is that it is essentially the highest quality uh, weeded bourbon to come out of Heaven Hill. And it also provides us a really great point of reference uh, based on the age statement of the bottle. So all of these old Fitzgerald decanters carry an age statement on them at this point between eight and 16 years old. And so when you're tasting it, not only are you tasting, again, the highest quality weeded bourbon that they're producing, but you're also being able to associate that particular flavor, that particular taste with the age statement on the bottle. So if you have the opportunity then to taste, you know, different versions of Old Fitzgerald, different releases, you can then sort of develop a trajectory in your mind of what the eight year tastes like compared to the 11 year, compared to the 15 year, etc. right? I mean, this provides you sort of an idea of how their weeded bourbon ages and how age has an effect on, on that flavor profile. I wouldn't expect the Larceny Barrel Proof line to necessarily have the same quality of weeded bourbon as the old Fitzgerald line. I mean, there's a reason that the uh, the old Fitzes carry the price tags that they do and, and the reason that they're, you know, highly allocated. But, you know, Larceny Barrel Proof should at least be inching towards that sort of upper limit of weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill. Let's look at a second example here. We have Elijah Craig Small Batch versus Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Now, I think this comparison should be somewhat representative of the comparison of Larceny versus Larceny Barrel Proof. So when you look at Elijah Craig, the small batch product at 94 proof, you're looking at a non-age stated small batch. But when you go up to the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, you have a 12-year age statement on that bottle, which is amazing. And you have proofs ranging from basically 118 to 140. Now, it's not just the proof and the age that we should look at with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, but it's also just the quality of the product and how exceptionally blended these batches are. I mean, they are really fantastic bourbons coming from Heaven Hill. So when we look at Larceny, a 92 proof small batch product, and we go up to the Larceny Barrel Proofs, I don't feel like we get that same step up not only in quality but in age and everything else there these are between six and eight years old these barrel proof blends um, and, and the quality to me doesn't sort of jump out of the glass the same way that the elijah craig barrel proof quality does in comparison to its younger and lower proof counterpart i know that's a long-winded explanation there but basically if you graft these imaginary lines on an imaginary graph <laughs> and this is old fits right? And the quality of bourbon, weeded bourbon that it is. And this is the comparison of the Elijah Craig small batch product to its barrel proof counterpart and how that relates to larceny, blah, blah, blah. Whatever that intersectional point is, to me, is what larceny barrel proof should be. And I don't think we're anywhere close to larceny barrel proof sort of meeting that standard or meeting that expectation that Heaven Hill has essentially set up for itself. All right, so I know that was extremely long-winded and I apologize, but I had to get that off my chest because if you go back and watch my Larceny A121 review, I didn't really have anything nice to say about that bottle or really any of the previous releases 
of the Larceny Barrel Proof lineup. So let's go ahead and get to this review now. This is the fifth batch of Larceny Barrel Proof to hit shelves. This is, again, a very new line. Uh, debuting in early 2020, just before the COVID pandemic. This batch is coming in at 121 proof. So that's 60.5% ABV, a very average ABV for this particular brand. I guess we should very quickly talk about what B521 means, this batch number. B basically just refers to it being the second release of the three releases that we have every year, A, B, and C. And then 521 means May of 2021. It's just a date code, essentially. Um, now, this one didn't really release in May. I didn't hear about it being anywhere that early. This was more of a June, July. This is a little bit of a late bloomer here for this batch of larceny, but that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and get into this now. Let's get to the review and check out this bourbon on the nose. All right, so first impressions here on the nose. This is just a very dark batch of Larceny Barrel Proof. You get a lot of earthiness on the nose here, but there's also a dessert-like quality. Um, lots of cane sugar, lots of brown sugar going on here as well. Now, there's also a very distinct youth on the nose here. I mean, I'm getting a lot of ethanol that's jumping out of the glass. You, you get some of these younger grain-forward characteristics a little bit, and... You know, I feel like at this point with Larceny Barrel Proof, having gotten that sort of experience on many of the previous batches, I feel like we just need older bourbon um, to be blended in here. Now, I know maybe I'm wishing for something that is not possible. I don't know. But yeah, I, I feel like all of these just carry this ethanol and this youth that I'm just not a big fan of. Now, with that said... I, I should point out that this feels like a more comprehensive batch of Larceny Barrel Proof than I've ever smelled before. Again, it does have those dark, rich notes and a ton of sugary sweetness. And I think this is going to appeal to a lot of people. And for me, I feel like even with its shortcomings, this is probably the best nose on a Larceny Barrel Proof that I've gotten thus far. Yeah, there's a little bit of nuttiness here. I mean, you, you kind of expect that from Heaven Hill, but the peanut note is not out of control. It's very balanced. It really blends in well to the earthiness, to the baking spice notes. Again, really distinct brown sugar and cinnamon notes going on in this particular batch. Um, I get a little bit of like a sharpness. It, it's almost like a, a dry wood characteristic. And I talk about this note a lot with some different Booker's batches and Old Forester barrel strength, uh, single barrel bottles as well. It's got this little dry woodiness that's kind of mingling in there with the spices and it's getting a little bit sharp on the nose. Um, again, it doesn't help the fact that it's so young as well. Yeah, I get maybe a little bit of a cedar note here and maybe a hint of pipe tobacco. This is not a fruit forward batch by any means. I'm not really getting any fruit here on the nose. It seems very much of that standard sort of caramelized bourbon profile. And in this case, with this particular batch, really deep, really rich, dark, and earthy. So I think that's all I've got here. Let's go ahead and go to the palate. Cheers. So right away here, you get punched in the mouth with ethanol and again with those youthful notes. But it's kind of crazy how quickly the sweetness just rushes in here. I mean, I feel like on my lips right now, I feel like my lips are coated in sugar. This is a very, very sweet batch of Larceny Barrel Proof. And I think it's really, really going to appeal to a lot of people because of that. On the first sip here, <laughs> you don't really get much more than that. I mean, you get the, the sharpness, the spice, the youth and ethanol up front. You get the sweetness. And by the time you've kind of processed that and your palate has calmed down and acclimated, you're into the finish here. Um, so I guess at this point on the first sip, it's got a really solid finish. It's traveling down into the chest. I mean, it's it's almost the, the nice Kentucky hug that we like to talk about. And I would say it's a pretty nice finish here in the palate. It's, I don't know, it's okay. It seems a little bit dry, but also sweet. So it, it's kind of conflicting there on the palate. Let's go in for a second sip. So second sip here you do start to move away from the sharpness at the beginning of the sip and you really start to get into some more of like the meat of what this bourbon is. So yes, 
there is still an immense amount of sugar and sugary sweetness at the front of the palate. But as it starts to roll back, you're now getting into a lot of those brown sugar type notes. Um, I actually get sort of like a, you know, like a Granny Smith apple, like a caramel apple, basically a Granny Smith apple covered in caramel. I'm getting a little bit of that now in the mid palate. It's like a, a little bit of a tart note, but also like a very sweet caramel drizzle um, and a little bit of something green there as well. So that's that's interesting here on the second sip. It's not what I would have expected. Uh, but again, you're getting into now some of those more oaky components, more earthy, more nutty flavors on the second sip, whereas the first sip was just like, you know, kind of a, a roller coaster for your palate. So let's go in now for a third and final sip, and then we're going to wrap this up. All right, so third and final sip here. I'm starting to get into something that I'm not a big fan of necessarily. Um, in the mid palate here, that Granny Smith apple note that I thought I was getting, this like caramel covered apple, it's actually, it's kind of revealing itself as being grassy, like freshly cut grass. And I actually got this note on Ezra Brooks 99, um, which I also reviewed here on the channel. It's, it feels a bit out of place for me to have like <laughs> this grassy note in the middle of a dark, rich, earthy bourbon. Now, earthy, grass, okay, you might make that comparison. But earthy notes in here do not mean grassy notes. Um, that, to me, meant dark and woody and oaky and wheat funk and all of that kind of good stuff. And now I've got this bright, just vibrant green lawn note. <laughs> it's, like I'm go it's like I mowed the grass and licked my lawn, and I don't like that. Um, and that's what's hanging on here on the palette mid palette into the finish. It's all freshly cut grass. Yes, there's vanilla. There's like a slight chocolate note. This is a very toasty, dark bourbon. And in fact, I think it's probably the best Larceny Barrel Proof I've had up to this point, even though this review has been kind of all over the place. But this freshly cut grass note for me is just not doing it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do one more sip. I'm going to do one more sip here and see if I'm crazy. I don't think I'm crazy. I think the grassy note definitely is in here. I'm getting maybe a little bit of something else fruity on the palate here. If I'm really trying to dig in, I, you know, you might be able to call out like a cherry or a dark raspberry note. But by and large, this seems like a two trick pony, right? It seems like it's exceptionally sweet, almost to a weird extent. And it seems like um, it's it's very earthy. So sweet and earthy are the two notes I would give for this batch. You can pick it apart however else you like. I know I've nerded out about this quite a bit. You can see I've drank this bottle down a good amount because I've been trying to figure this thing out. But it's sweet, it's earthy, and it's got this off-putting cut grass note that I'm going to be curious to see if, if you guys find that note in this bourbon. I guess for me, um, moral of the story with this particular bottle is that I'm so so about it. I I think overall this is a good step, you know, a step in the right direction, I should say, for the Larceny Barrel Proof line. It's probably my favorite, or I guess maybe my second favorite um, bottle that they've released out of the five batches so far. It actually reminds me of like a sweeter Booker's for whatever reason, um, like a sweet, well balanced Booker's. I'm kind of getting that vibe from this bottle. Um, so if you guys are uh, looking for a cheaper alternative to Booker's this year, maybe consider batch B521 from Larceny Barrel Proof. Otherwise, yeah, I could recommend this at the MSRP, but I would not go out paying above MSRP for this. And I also wouldn't do that for any of the previous Larceny Barrel Proof releases. So Larceny, you know, you're keeping me hanging on here. Heaven Hill, I'm going to buy the next batch. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that that is a better batch than this one. I don't think it's worth doing a comparison in this particular review to the other batches because I've gotten everything I need to know from this bottle right now and dragging this video out anymore would just be a crime. So that's all I've got today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please hit that like button. Uh, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Click the bell notification and turn on all notifications to find out when I'm going live, which is at least once a week, and when I'm dropping new content. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out the Drums and Drams Patreon. The link is in the description below. Um, that's a great way to get access to some exclusive behind-the-scenes content. And also, 
you know, just to support the channel in uh, in different ways, five, ten, and fifteen dollar tiers there at this point. So you know, if you want to support a little or support a lot, you can do either of those things and check out the different rewards that I offer. Otherwise, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of the review. It's a little long winded. I do apologize. It's been a while since I've made a review, so I'm uh, I'm getting my bearings back here. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up with a final sip of this batch B521. So cheers, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams. Thank you.